Hi, everybody. Welcome to Chit Chat Chop, uh, live from the new virtual studio at Kitchen Door. Uh, so tonight we've got an excellent episode for you. Uh, I am uh, Chef Andrew uh, here, like I said, and uh, tonight we have Danny Squires of Craving Halifax, and we're going to do a little cook-along. So like a sing-along, only no singing and more cooking. Hi, Danny. How you doing? Hi, I'm great. How are you? Great. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored. Thank you. Well, you know, it's uh, it's an honor to have you too. Uh, it's we're just all so honored, um, so honored. So uh, we were corresponding earlier in the week about you know what uh, what kind of dish we wanted to uh, to make uh, make together tonight. Uh, we had a few options, and um, veggie pakoras is what what came up. So they're going to be delicious. They're going to be awesome, and. Um, I mean, uh, it's sort of like a, an Indian vegetable fritter for uh, for just a, a loosely loose way to describe them. They're going to be delicious, I think. Uh, so, uh, Danny, um, you, yeah, I mean, you're. I always see you posting, going around to restaurants and everything, and posting really awesome reviews. Uh, I imagine everything's changed quite a bit in the past few months for you. Everything has been unbelievably different, and I feel my heart goes out to the restaurant community and the hospitality community. I, I can't imagine what you guys are going through. Well, it's, I mean, the word is of course pivot. That's what everybody's saying. And it's just, uh, it's really uh, amazing to see the work people are putting into uh, shifting their business models and then trying to get uh, as many people in the community out to support them safely. And also uh, all the amazing takeout of options that are now available to yes. us that were never available before. I was si I saw in your blog earlier, uh, you were doing a little uh, takeout test of uh, rhubarb pizza and a few different places. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's really- It's great to have such, like the takeout option is really great. I like to, you know, go to the beach or travel, or I feel like I've been traveling a lot more. I just got back from Cape Breton, um, mm -hmm. got to see that. I went to the South Shore last weekend. So everything's been, different but at the same time I feel like I get to enjoy it's a different experience but I get to enjoy more food in a faster pace <laughs> <laughs> hey never a bad thing uh well it's amazing all the options we have so close to us like uh, my partner I've been loving day trips you know go to Chester go to Lunenburg go to the valley just uh you know spending those tourist dollars at home and it's uh, it's we have an amazing province so we're really Agreed. we're really lucky no it's our province is amazing and I feel like everybody is ready to support their community right now and everyone's ready to support Nova Scotia. So to see, you know, people going to White Point instead of going to the Bahamas or, you know, just staying local and supporting our local cafes and restaurants and, you know, like going um, whitewater rafting or just experiencing stuff in our own backyard is just amazing right now. Totally, totally. It's uh, it's pretty awesome what we have just in our back, literally in our backyards. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, uh, why don't we unpack our, our pakora kit uh, while we uh, while we get going here, and I'm just show everybody the ingredients we're using, and then we'll do some chopping because we're oh yeah, so uh, packed up in our nice compostable co packaging here. Um, so first of all, I got some cilantro right on the top here. Are are you a cilantro fan? I am a huge cilantro fan. Excellent. I kind of love it where this time of year you you kind of get little bits of cilantro that have sort of uh, overgrown just just a little bit. And you get these slightly different leaves. They're really yes. pretty. You can tell the relation uh, between uh, cilantro and the carrot family really easy just by seeing those little tops. It's pretty cool. And speaking of carrots, we have uh, just some grated carrot in there as well. So all these veggies and this carrot, I'm just going to put right in our bowl because we'll get to that in a second. All right, and then uh, we also have some uh, cabbage. Just a little, probably about, this will end up being about half a cup of cabbage all chopped up, so just a little wedge of cabbage. Uh, then we also have half an onion going on. So I'm just putting these on the cutting board right now. And then we have just the side of a red pepper, so we'll get that on the cutting board too. And then we have some snap peas. We can just leave them right in the, in the box for now. And then I didn't know where you uh, sort of sat on uh, on spicy flavor. So I included one jalapeno pepper, um, just in case you wanted to add a little heat to this. Oh, exactly. the whole so. thing. Oh, Danny, we're in, we're in. This is great. <laughs> I, I knew, I, I, I'd like to, I like to gamble with spice. So No, the spicier the better. If you had five of these, on. I'd probably eat them. <laughs> <laughs> well, we also have chili flakes, so you can amp it up even more. 
Oh yeah, that's the chili head bob right there. I love that. <laughs> and then uh, we have our, um, just I diced up some uh, garlic and ginger, nice and fine in one little container here. So you can just put that right in with the carrots because that's gonna be in the base of our pakora. And then also we have our little spice kit here. So I've got some garam masala, which is just a nice mix of warming spices uh, and, uh, and some cumin seeds. So we'll just put that right in the bowl as well. There we so go. Easy. And so easy. It's, uh, it's uh, what we call in the business a dump and stir. No, just kidding. That's what they call it uh, <laughs> on, on uh, much fancier productions than this. Um, and then we also have in this container, this is a combination of cornstarch and chickpea flour. So not only are these uh, casein free, these are uh, gluten free. And so as go. many of you know, I have a casein allergy. So I actually can't have 80% um, of what's in dairy without getting really sick. So it was awesome that Kitchen Door was able to kind of accommodate an allergy such like that. So yeah, so thank you again, Andrew. <laughs> Well, hey, no, this is this is part of the business, right? It's all about, uh, there's so many different options that we have these days. There's no reason to be pigeonholed and say we can't, you know, accommodate this, this or that. There's so many ways to approach a recipe. So it's, if anything, it's a fun challenge most of the time. Did you say to throw it in? Yeah, throw in the spices right in there. We got our ginger, our garlic, and our carrots. And then we're going to start dicing our vegetables to go in here as well. So I'm just going to put my bowl to the side here. We'll get that heated up. So I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, well, why don't we chop the, uh, the onion first, Danny? Sounds good. So I just want to cut this into nice thin half moons. So uh, I've just got my onion here on my board and just make sure to tuck your fingers in to keep your, your, uh, your, uh, your fingertips out of the way of your knife. So just sort of curl your fingers in. And then we're just looking for nice thin uh, slices of onion. So, I mean, you 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 obviously uh, try a lot of uh, new restaurants on town and not a, and a lot of new uh, a lot of menus uh, lately. What's something that you've uh, been particularly excited by? Um, I feel like there's so much to be excited by right now. There's so many restaurants trying new things. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I I just got back from my Cape Breton trip, so I just I need to highlight one of the restaurants called the Gaslight Cafe. Oh, they, cool. Um, it's this couple who owns this cafe and they have a second rest or a second cafe in Louisburg and they make the most amazing pot pies that I've ever Ooh. had. And those are so delicious. I had the lobster pot pie, absolutely delicious. And that just sticks in my mind as such a great experience. The owners were amazing. The food was great. Um, a little closer to home. Um, I'm super excited by the Garden Food Bar. I don't know if you've been in. I haven't. I've seen pictures of swings at tables and yes. like crazy cool stuff. Yeah. It's amazing. And I think I was most excited. Um, the food is really delicious, but I was really excited by, I really wanted to try the experience because I'm so about, you know, the experience from start to finish. When you walk in those doors to when you leave the food, the service, kind of everything in between. Um, and I was so excited to kind of get in there and try the food and the flavor because I've had their takeout and it's delicious, but mm -hmm. I didn't think that, you know, it would be just as amazing in the restaurant and plus their swings. So I mean, right. That's, I mean, it's, it's kind of the perfect bonus. If the food is good and there's no swings, you are less inclined to go than, you know, good food and <laughs> swings. I yes, mean, it's just, true, that's true. math. That's a, that's totally math right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, uh, oh, I forgot. We should actually, uh, we're just going to share everything on Facebook. We meant to do that earlier so we can make sure people can, uh, can reach out and say, and, uh, and make sure we're, uh, we're logged in there. So we're just going to take one second and go on uh, to make sure that we're seeing any comments that are popping up here on Facebook. Oh, there we are. I got us. And, uh, thanks to everybody for joining us. Let's see if I can, there we go figuring this out great uh oh i can share it and i think the most captivating part of the show is when uh two people just share things on their phones so it's <laughs> it's 
it, it's really uh, it's, it's a modern take on. I have no idea what I'm saying. I'm just trying, Oh, share. That's where the share button is. Sometimes, <laughs> I swear, I am so bad at finding the share button. That is that is just embarrassing. I don't know how to work any of this a few minutes ago. You'd think I'd, I'd be better at social media by now. <laughs> well, you fooled me. You're kind of, you, you, you got the uh, the expert seal. And I mean, uh, you're, you're voted in it. You're an award winner in the coast. I mean, um, come on now. Thank you so much. <laughs> Such a That's good awesome. memory. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Uh, so now let's uh, on our veggie pakoras thing here. We've had our social media break, um, but let's uh, slice up our cabbage and our red pepper. And we're just looking for nice uh, thin julienne strips. So uh, I just have my cabbage here and I'm just cutting it nice and thin, just like similar to the half moon shape that we were doing with the onion. And what we're going to do is when we get all of these in the bowl, we're going to add some salt and a little bit of pepper and, um, uh, the salt is actually going to get uh, get some water out of these vegetables, so that'll help form a little batter uh, with our corn flour and, or sorry, chickpea flour and cornstarch. So the key is to be able to let it sit for about five minutes while it uh, while it saturates there. So it's that cabbage right in there, and then I'll just do the same thing with my red pepper. Was I supposed to throw my onions in there? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, throw the onions in there too. That's great. Whoops. So, Andrew, do you mind if I ask you a question? Bring it on. So, I'm a huge fan, and I'm sure you know this because I've taken a few kitchen door classes myself, but what is your favorite thing about doing online um, kitchen classes? Well, it, it's one of my favorite things is actually in the feedback we've been getting about doing these online classes, and I never anticipated this would be a thing that people would really like, but people like being in their own kitchens around their own equipment. And I kind of like that window into somebody's kitchen or just, you know, like cooking with somebody and we leave the microphones on so everybody can just pipe up and we're, we're having a virtual kitchen party, basically, you know, it's, gotcha. it's really, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's really cool. And it's, I mean, totally different, of course, because we switched gears from the in-person classes here in the studio space, but recreating that feeling, but also making it a little more personal uh, has been really, really cool. That's awesome. I, I haven't taken an online one yet, but I know that in your new space in Dartmouth, it was absolutely beautiful and it's such a good experience there. Um, so I'm sure that, you know, the new at home version isolation um, would be just as amazing with you there. Well, it's, it's, yeah, it's really fun. And it's, uh, we've adapted a lot of classes that we had already from, uh, from our, our kitchen door uh, repertoire. We have, you know, a pad Thai one, which I just taught tonight. Uh, we do gnocchi. Uh, which is a nice quick pasta choice. Um, we're trying on, we're working on adapting ones that are like a little bit longer because when people are cooking at home, it might not be a three hour class. Maybe, you know, get everything done an hour, hour, 15 minutes would be preferable a lot of time, especially seeing as how they feed two people. Okay. Uh, it's, it's kind of awesome. You can just feed, you know, cook dinner and then sit down and eat it after the class. It's uh, it's pretty, it's a pretty cool option. All right. Are you ready for the jalapeno pepper now? Yes. All right. So the way I like to, to deal with these, because we want to cut it into nice long strips, I just want to take off the top and the bottom of, of the pepper. And then I'm going to cut a little slit right down the middle, just like that. And we're basically going to unfurl the pepper and sort of put our knife in this little slit and then just sort of roll the pepper away while running the knife. And then we can just take out all the seeds. There we go. And I just like to do that so we can get a nice uh, strip of pepper going into our, um, going into our, into our pecoris. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, hey, Charlotte. Nice to see you. I just seen on the comments there. Hi. I miss you too, Charlotte. Good to see you. Glad you're tuning in. That's awesome. Charlotte's one of our big fans. Um, and, uh, oh, very cool. It's, uh, it's always weird to operate Facebook over to the side and then cook on the <laughs> other side. Uh, so now I've got our jalapeno just ready to go, just flat on the board. So uh, just cut little thin strips, just like you did the red pepper. That'll be a nice pop of heat in here. Do you use the whole pepper yourself, Andrew? Oh yeah, I'm going for it. I really like, I, I can handle a medium, medium heat pretty well. Uh, it's, it's when it goes over like a medium that I really start sweating. Really? And that's the sweat is more of a barrier than the, the pain 
But I really like like Szechuan food when you get uh, like Szechuan peppercorns that sort of numb yeah. some of the heat. So like it almost makes the uh, the pain of the heat like really pleasurable, and like you can just experience more. It's really yeah, it's really cool. That's delicious. Yeah. Yep, it's really good. <coughs> Pardon me. I'm just gonna give my hands a little rinse here before I uh, forget, because there's nothing worse than not washing your hands after jalapeno peppers. So top tip, everybody out there in Chit Chat Chopland, wash your hands after jalapeno peppers. Yes. So awesome, we've got our, oh, we need a few, um, why don't you grab four of these snap peas as well? I think I gave you a few too many. We got a lot of edge in the bowl here, so okay. don't need all of these. Uh, yeah, so we'll just take four and we'll also just sort of cut them into thin strips, just like the uh, jalapeno peppers. And these are gonna add a nice bright green crunch to the whole thing. What's great about a pakora is it's, um, you've got all these beautiful vegetables in there. We're gonna fry it up nice and crispy and uh, every vegetable adds its own flavor and texture to the dish. So it really, it really wakes up your mouth. There we go. So snow peas going right in there. Or sorry, snap peas. Snow peas would work great too. Uh, I just love all the produce this time of year. It's crazy how fresh it's and so delicious. It's so beautiful. That oh, it's so beautiful. So colorful. Yeah, so great. And it's great now to see all the markets have like plans in place. You know, up, I live in the north end of Halifax, and they just started a uh, a weekend market there just in uh, in front of a mini mall on Nova Leaf. Really? Uh, yeah, it's really great. So there's a bunch of it's organized You'll by Dinah Sourdough. Send me the information on that. That's so exciting. Yeah, nice yeah, it's super cool. Nice to see you. Oh my word, you're so sweet. Miss you too. The <laughs> Aw, that's awesome. Oh, oh Melissa, Mo thank you. Ooh, knife skills yeah. review, Danny. Nice. He has the same knife as me. I know it looks kind of like a horror movie, but it's a really <laughs> <good> knife. <laughs> oh, is that a cleaver? I um, it's a Japanese knife. Oh, I li I I I really like cleaver type shapes to cook with. That's like my uh, if I have to chop a lot of onions or anything. That's I didn't even see your knife. My screen's too small, but that's awesome. Yeah. Chef Garen hooked me up, so I just want a huge shout out to that. That's it's amazing. Great. All right, so we got all our veg in the bowl now, right? Yeah. All right, so let's add a generous bit of salt here. I'm actually gonna say about two really good pinches of salt, because this is the whole seasoning for the entire dish. So we'll just get it right in here with the onions, uh, the cabbage and everything. And you wanna get your hand in there and just sort of crunch it and mash it around a little bit, because that'll help break down and squeeze some of the water out of these vegetables, which of course I mentioned earlier, we uh, need that to sort of get our nice Was I supposed batter. to put cilantro in already? Um, no, we were gonna add oh. it next after the squeeze stage. Okay, I'm sorry. No, no, that's fine, that's fine. It's You gotta keep me on my toes, Danny, because <laughs> I don't have anything written down here. I, I mean, I'm just, I'm just making these ingredients work. So there we go. So they're, I can just tell by the feel that the vegetables are accepting that salt. Now they're getting a little bit uh, softer, uh, which is which is great. So we're just gonna let that sit while we get our cilantro ready to go in there. I'm give my hands a little rinse again. Mm -mm -mm. Sorry, my sink is outside of Careful vision. Hey, that that's all right. That's all right. I mean, it's uh, we know you're there somewhere. <laughs> well, I was doing the same thing. I had to turn around. It's always weird to turn your back on a camera, right? But I know it's, uh, it's just too important to not to. We got to wash our hands, jalapeno and everything else. Uh, so now uh, we got our cilantro. So I really love cilantro stems. So I want to use like the whole thing. So I'm just going to uh, take the uh, the cilantro. And uh, I'm just gonna just turn it into sort of a little, pinch it into a little ball like this. And I like to just to do that to contain it when I cut it. But then stems and all, I'm just gonna chop that right up so we can add it right to our mix. Do you know anyone that thinks cilantro tastes like soap? My sister. Really? Yes, I don't know how, like it's a genetic thing. Like, I I, I, I don't know. I don't so know, like people, it's- I think it's like, I think there's actually a statistic on it. I, I swear I watched it the other day and it was like 50% of people think it genuinely tastes like soap. And I, I could eat like a whole bunch of it. I love it. Well, it's so fresh and vibrant 
and like it's great cooked in things and then chopped up fresh on top just like slightly warmed by the dish um yeah it's crazy like uh, i actually uh, when we did cooking classes here previously kitchen do i in our uh, i used a lot of cilantro i love cilantro it's in uh, for instance our taco class in our mexican street food class i'd always do a little poll at the beginning of class and it was usually uh 10 to 20 percent uh, yeah they didn't like it thought it tasted like soap and also our informal staff po poll here is about 25 percent don't like oh it my so word. yeah i've done a little research <laughs> very informal research yeah but you know what we like cilantro and we're gonna we're gonna plow through we're gonna be all right we're gonna love it more cilantro for us if they don't like it we get extra so i'm just gonna go ahead and put that cilantro right in the bowl here with everything else Give my board a little wipe. Awesome. All right, that looks so good. So I'm just gonna give it a nice stir around now. So I've got a spoon out now. I'm just using to mix it up, but now we can, um, how's yours looking, Danny? You got some, uh, your vegetables looking a little sweaty in there? A little, oh yeah. Ours look the same, that's perfect. That's all, that's, you know, doing virtual cooking classes, I always get people to hold things up to the camera. I don't even know if, can you see it? Uh, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, I'm seeing it twice for some reason, so that's cool. I, oh, I see now. Okay, Adam's doing so many cool camera tricks in the background, <laughs> and I only clue into them when they're just about over. Um, that's how good he is. He's amazing. Yeah, Adam's Adam's the, uh, the, the digital backbone. He knows so much, I, I need a class from him after this. <laughs> Well, all the, well, I mean, shout out to Adam. He helped set this whole studio situation up. I've got his studio lights here uh, and we've got, um, he showed me how to use Zoom properly. So uh, really? uh, yeah, I can set up a Zoom meeting and I can rename cameras. So I am living it. Congratulations. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you, Adam, for the digital, he's my digital coach. There we go. All right, hey, so. Janine. Oh, what is, oh, uh -huh. she's so sweet. Awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's very, she's very excited. Oh, Janine and Janet, you've got a lot of J's on there. That's awesome. <laughs> um, do you smell what's coming out of this bowl already? It's not even cooked. Like, this would actually... I know. My this... whole kitchen smells like it. Man, I, I just want to put this on a sub or something. That'd be a great, like, topping for a... Uh... It would. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That'd be really good. Anyway, there you go. Another recipe idea coming from you. <laughs> coming from the, the kitchen door food lab here and so anyway vegan, let's right yeah it's vegan so yeah it's vegan we're set this is great i, lo I love that this surprises me i like <laughs> oh yeah i just focus on the gluten-free no vegan too so anyway yeah let's just sprinkle this flour and don't put it all in necessarily we'll just sort of put in about uh, three quarters of what we have here and then we'll mix it around see what kind of texture we get because we want to be able to form like a nice loose patty look what we have here Okay, good. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just dump the whole thing in here. Oh, great. And we're not going to see, like, it's basically going to be really uh, stuck to all the veggies, which is perfect. It should be loose, though, right? Yep, it's going to be oh. loose. So this is what mine looks like here, just nice and loose, but I'll, I'm still able to uh, take a little bit of my hand and form it into a nice little flat patty like that. So why don't we get our, our stove tops going? So we need to get... Uh, non-stick pan on the stove, and we're going to turn it to uh, to about a, let's say a six out of ten. There we go. And that's another interesting thing about doing uh, online classes too is everybody's got a different stove or different, uh, you know. Okay. I don't. Have, yeah. I've never met. I never met anyone with a stove that went up to eleven yet. But like, look out! I can't <laughs> wait for that day. So you know, you got to come up with a way to tell everybody to come to a very similar heat. All right, so I'm going to put my canola oil right in the pan now, too. So probably about uh, about two tablespoons because we want to get some nice crispy edges. I'm just going to make sure the bottom of the pan is covered here. And uh, normally these are deep fried, so we're doing well. That's even better. This is probably the healthiest thing I've had in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Have you well, been to any restaurants, Andrew? Any places that I should check out that I haven't been? Have you been to Taco Loco in on Isleville Street? I have not actually. I'm pretty sure I saw them for Taco Week, but I don't yep. think I went. But I know that I know they're there. Yeah, so uh, they have a nice little outside uh, picnic table there. So we went there uh, oh, 
a week or two ago and just sat outside on Isleville Street. It was great. Uh, you know, very reasonably priced tacos. And they have that uh, Haritos soda that I love, you know, like guava or yeah. flavor. Or uh, I got pineapple. Oh, so good. I'll definitely check it out. That sounds amazing. Yeah, it's a perfect kind of like weeknight, weeknight meal because everything comes out really quick. And uh, they really, they really care about what the food they make. And I love that. So now uh, we're basically, I'm just going to leave my glove on here because I'm going to free form some patties. But you can also use a spoon or like even like an ice cream scoop to sort of uh, bunch up the vegetables in. Uh, and then basically we just want to make sure they're nice and flat when we put them in the pan. So I'm just going to make a little patty that's about that size right there. Just sort of covers all my fingers and just put it right in the oil. And what's great about, that's it. That's it. Make a wish. And uh, what's, what I love about this, and when it hits the pan, is you get all these almost like vegetable tentacles coming off of it. You get all these little crunchy bits that are going to fry up really nice. So a key to this, too, is don't overcrowd the pan. So I think I can fit, I can probably fit about 75, 80% of the mix into the pan here at one time. want to make sure we don't lose too much heat in here. So just use as much as space in your pan as you can without crowding it too badly. I think I, I think I messed up. What'd you do? I, I may have put the powder in a little bit before I was supposed to. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Is it, does it hold together uh, decently when you, uh, when you hold it? No. Is it? Well, do you have, well, you can add a little extra. Do you have any extra flour there or uh, cornstarch we could add in? I do. Like, One second. Yeah. Why don't, you, why don't you free pour a little bit of that in there? I love I love problem solving in the kitchen. This is <laughs> the best. But also it goes to show like how the recipes are are so variable when it comes to you know moisture content in flowers or how much water con the water content of the onion is you know it's so hard to write a recipe at the time uh because of these variables you have to take that into account but also know that a recipe isn't you know it's not the bible you you have to have a little variability in there of course and it's good that you're able to fix it on the spot i mean it is no longer gluten free but you fixed it <laughs> <laughs> there we go there we go next time we'll send you a little extra chickpea flour <laughs> so minor minor uh, I, I just got ahead of you a little bit here oh that's okay uh oh somebody let's see who's this oh chef garen's wondering what you're making do you want to let him know oh we're making veggie picara chef garen yes with that knife that with that awesome knife yes All right, so I'm gonna flip one over here just to see how it looks, but I have a feeling, oh yes, nice and golden brown. So when they're in the pan, uh, when you get to that point, Danny, just like flatten them with your spatula. So they're, we're going for like a medium sized pancake kind of, kind of vibe. And that way we can get the oil to crisp up all those little bits of veggies. Oh, nice. I see it there. Good. Looks good. How's it smell over there? Oh, it smells so good. Good. Check this out. I've got some amazing caramelization going on here. Nice and crispy. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, it's gone. Throw a little towel on that grease that I accidentally dropped there on the floor. Pardon me. I don't want to mess up Patty's studio too much. She's on vacation this week, you know? <laughs> She'll come back and she'll never let you do this again. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just hope she's not getting reception out uh, in her campground, wherever she is. <laughs> we love you, Patty. Hi, Christine. So, it's nice to see you. I can definitely give you the recipe after this. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. And I find that you can use, like, as, as you're showing, Danny, you can use pretty much any kind of flour you want. In this case, we use chickpea and cornstarch, and then you use a little uh, all-purpose flour to bring it together there. How did that work for you? Are they sticking together a little bit better? Um, 
Not really, but I messed up, so I'm really sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. Well, the key is, like, it's probably going to feel a little loose in the pan, but as it cooks, it'll just tighten up and form pancakes. So as long as we don't move it around too much in the pan. Oh, yeah. And it's, like, caramelizing? Yep. We're, that's, that's what mine looked like. We're doing fine. You're doing fine. You're a star. This is great. This is great. I'm just going to grab a quick plate here because I just realized I used one. So, Danny, um, Indian food in Halifax. Have you gone out for much Indian food around here? I have eaten at every Indian restaurant. Indian's actually my favorite food. I love it, too. It's so good. Do you have a favorite restaurant? Uh, it's been, you know, honestly, it's probably been a year or so, but I went to Daba out in Bears Lake. They're yeah. very good. Very good. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. They do some really nice lamb curries. Uh, we usually go when my parents come down, and my father's a huge lamb curry fan, so we definitely went went there. Uh, do you have any any place to recommend that I should check out? Of course. So I have three top restaurants for Indian All food. All right. Um, my first, and I'm sure if you go on my Instagram feed, you know how much I love them, Marichi Tandoor, which is oh. on the corner. I believe it's Blowers and Argyle. It's Oh, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely phenomenal. The owners are amazing. Um, my next would have to be Raza. I'm a huge fan of Raza and Shivani's Kitchen. And the oh, the Shivani's, of course, of course, yes. they're great. Yeah, I really it's, love. Uh, they've really dove into a lot of takeout options, and you you're starting to see their food in lots of different markets, which is great. Yeah, and I love. I think they're even in Sobeys and like Pete's, and they're they're everywhere right now. So I mean, yeah. supporting local is so much. So much easier now. I feel like a lot of big retailers really took on local, local, you know, spices and foods and kind of all of that during this. So I mean, props, totally. Props to them. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, I love to see stuff like that. And we, I mean, we have so many great things around us. It's just nice to see more people cooking, but also eating out at places that just make great local food. Agreed. Yeah, it's for sure. Oh, so mine are almost uh, almost getting there. I got I got some like really nice dark spots. That's don't worry about that. There's lots of sugars in some of these vegetables. So some spots will caramelize quicker than others, but um, we're gonna get real nice crunchy, almost like a you know what I described as a pancake. That was not right. It's more of a roshti. It's closer to like a potato roshti, in that sort of sense. Hi, Julie. I I think this is a good question for Andrew. I, oh, I that is an excellent up. question. Yeah, you can, well, uh, Julie, you could have them as an appetizer. You could have them. They're kind of great because this batch, I mean, I can make another four with just the one and a half cups of uh, vegetables that we use. So these actually would freeze amazingly well. So if you want to, you know, do up a, a batch and uh, cook a bunch off, you can easily, you know, just pop them in the oven and have them as a little snack. Uh, they're great on the side of a, a dish. You know, if you want to have a bunch of people over for, for curry, you can make a few curries and then serve these on the side. You can bring them as a... You know what? They're a great dish if you're going over, you know, to, to a, a small gathering of a group of friends, uh, you know, having a little uh, potluck. These would be perfect for that because they are gluten free. They are dairy free. They are vegan and they're tasty. So you won't have to worry about a lot of dietaries that way. How'd I do, Danny? Would that answer it? Oh, yeah. OK. Awesome. Uh, how are yours looking? They look really good. I'm proud of one of them. Oh, good, good. I'll see if I can get it out here. Oh, know. that's really good. It's so good, you should get it back in the pan. <laughs> I don't want you to slip on the grease. I have to wipe up a grease spot here when we're done, because I, uh, I might wipe out. Got to be careful. <laughs> but that looks awesome. And I really like to serve these... Uh, they're great. You can serve a, like a, ma a mango chutney with them or a, oh yeah, I see. I just, I have the Facebook feed on the side here and you're showing me on a big screen that, oh, I'm sorry. You made the sad face when I told you to put it back in the pan. <laughs> I'm seeing everything about 30 seconds later on the side here. It's really funny. Um, but uh, yeah, I forgot what I was saying before that. So it's fine. <laughs> oh, I know sauces, mango chutney, like a mint chutney. Uh, or a tamarind sauce, like we're going to serve uh, with this. So this is um, very similar to stuff that you can uh, you can buy at, at the superstore, um, but it's tamarind puree, a uh, little bit of lime juice, uh, sugar, and uh, not much else. Honestly, a little bit of garlic and ginger, 
and it is uh, is perfect for something like this. All right, what do you think, Danny? Are we ready to uh, to plate some stuff up, or you need to need another minute over there? I think I think I'm good. Awesome. All right, let's do a plate up, and I'm I'm not going to do anything super fancy except the move I call the the chefy swoosh, uh, or just the swoosh or the swipe, whatever you want to. Um, but basically, it's like that chef move where you put uh, a pile of something at the end of the plate. And then like a shooting star, you go swoosh and just drag the spoon through it. Sorry, I switched my plate because I want to be as cool as you. Oh my God, I'm glad you have options. That's great. Okay. And I'm just gently piling one on the other on top of the, the streak. Okay, Ooh, so you said a... you put it on the side and then you swoosh it. Yeah, so just put a nice dollop of the sauce and then you just put the spoon down in it and drag it right through. Yes, yes, that's awesome. That's what we're talking about. And this is what I'm talking about right here. So that is all plated up. You can see the beautiful red peppers just in the front there and a little bit of that tamarind sauce underneath. Oh, yeah. Shauna St. Pierre uh, Power just said she'd love seeing what you're up to. Oh, she's my best friend from university. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Hi, Shanna. Thank you. Okay. I think we made a lot of people hungry tonight, Danny. So that's great. That looks awesome. It's not well, as tan done. as yours. Well, you know, we can. I have I have studio lighting here. Let's say the studio lighting is uh, is, is hurting me. Or is making it? I don't know. I promise but, it uh, looks it looks really good here, but it looks really. I guess it's the ring light, probably. That's. Oh, you have a ring light. Yeah, yeah. I oh, do. Well, you're very well lit, but maybe it's not designed for pakoras. I don't know. <laughs> uh, so yeah, well, why don't we why don't we give these a bite? We'll give it a taste. See how see how we did. I'm really uh, I'm really uh, happy to get into this jalapeno. Oh yeah, let's have a little taste here. So veggie pakoras, jalapeno, red peppers, cabbage, carrot, the works. Well, I know what I'm having for dinner. Oh my gosh. Isn't that tasty? I love the like, the burn of the jalapeno on my tongue. Mm-hmm. I really like the cabbage in there too, because it's it's sort of like um, how cabbage would get like in an egg roll filling, where it steams a mm -hmm. bit and then gets kind of and is also nice and crunchy. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is probably one of the most flavorful things I've ever had, and I'm not even lying. This is amazing. Well, you made it yourself. This is great. Well, I made it thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs> and you can too. A kitchen doors virtual cooking classes, but. <laughs> They're, they oh. truly are amazing. I mean, like I said, I haven't tried a virtual one, but I've tried the in-class one and everything's just so, so easy. Well, it's, you know, if you can take the stress out of a lot of the things that revolve around cooking and, you know, fears that people may have in the kitchen just by, you know, having the kit delivered to the door or just having the recipe in front or like the ability to talk to somebody while it's going on, uh, it just removes a barrier, right? You can just mm -hmm. enjoy yourself more and, and totally get into it. Well, I don't know if you know this, but when I first moved into my house a year ago, a year ago in a couple of weeks, um, Patty sent along about a week's worth of the kitchen door. Um, what are they called? The oh, are ready meals or yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they they sent them to the door, and they were all ready. And I mean, it took the stress out of moving for that week for us. So I mean, like it it's such a good concept and it, they're healthy meals and you kind of, it's just, it's what kitchen door is doing is amazing. So. Well, thank you. I'll pass it on to the whole team because there's a whole <laughs> team here that is really killing it. They're doing a great job. And uh, I mean, we offer dinner to your door four days a week now. So, you know, you can check kitchen doors website, see what we have to offer uh, app, app main dessert. We have it all to your door and uh, you can, you can feed everybody and put your feet up afterwards. Yeah, it's good stuff. I um, 
I'm excited to eat more pakora. This is good. I know it's delicious. <laughs> I can't stop eating it. Well, good. I don't want you to. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, well, Danny, I think that's uh, that's the end of our of our little chit chat chat affair. Well, thank you so much, Andrew. Thank you. This was a blast, and it was it was. I mean, I met you a few times. You know, I think we were at a dinner at the Orient together. Yes. Chef Ivan's incredible work over there. Uh, but it was just him. it was awesome to cook with you. This is a uh, this is it's always you always learn somebody something about somebody uh, when you cook with them. And you're a dark horse. You were all nervous, but you killed it. So I hope to have you on here again. It'd be awesome. Thank you for everything. I'm so honored. I appreciate it. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks. All right, and thanks for watching, everybody. That's chit chat chop. I don't know what episode number we're on, but we had a great time. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Thanks for coming on. Bye. Bye. Hey, parents. Do you have any aspiring junior chefs at home? Well, I would love to show them some great tips and tricks to make awesome tacos and an amazing mac and cheese. So check us out, kitchendoor.ca, for all your junior chefs at home. <laughs>